If I was to ask you to name an evil companion of Santa Claus, an entity who follows him around on Christmas Eve giving out brutal punishments to naughty children, your first thought would probably be Krampus, the Christmas demon, who kidnaps naughty children, whips them with birch branches and carries them off to hell to devour them. But I've already covered the Krampus on a past Christmas episode, so whilst looking up other Christmas dark traditions and lore, I stumbled upon a character who also travels with Santa dishing out severe punishments to children, and his name is Hans Trapp, the horrifying Christmas Scarecrow. The dark legend of the evil Christmas spirit Hans Trapp originates in the Alsace and Lorraine regions of France way back in the 1400s. In life, Hans Trapp was a very wealthy man with a very sinister demeanour. He was a very selfish soul and extremely greedy. No matter how much wealth he accumulated, it was never enough. He always wanted more. Hans Trapp stood at a very tall six and a half foot, a monstrous man with wild, untamed, dark, thick hair and an uncontrollably long, thick, dark beard, with two beady eyes that stirred out from below his bushy eyebrows. It was said that Hans Trapp practiced the occult and had consulted with dark forces to reach his wealthy status. But Hans Trapp wanted more wealth and even more power, and he wanted more than anything to be feared. And so it is said that Hans Trapp summoned the devil himself and made a deal. Somehow the church found out about this, and it is safe to say they were furious and they immediately placed sanctions on Hans Trapp and excommunicated him, taking his wealth and his name. Hans Trapp was exiled from his home, and so he fled into the deep dark forest, making a home for himself. And after time, insanity festered in his already troubled mind, and he became even more obsessed with satanic rituals and dark practices. As sanity slipped further and further away, and he fell even deeper into his evil and demented ways, he started to crave something else apart from power and wealth. Hans Trapp had begun to crave flesh, human flesh, and in particular, a child's flesh. He desired this more than anything, the urge was now overpowering, and one day he decided he was going to take a child. But he knew he was a terrifying sight to behold. And so Hans Trapp came up with the bizarre idea to disguise himself as a scarecrow by stuffing the sleeves of his dirty jacket with thick straw, a sack upon his face and a dirty torn hat. And he stood as still as a statue in the middle of a field waiting for the perfect moment to strike. And he didn't have to wait long. A small boy aged 10 eventually approached, totally unaware. As a young boy walked up towards the scarecrow with not a cur in the world, he thought for a second that he saw the scarecrow move, and so he stopped and stirred up at the straw-filled terror. And then without warning, the scarecrow pounced upon the child and stabbed him to death with a very large sharp stick. He then flung the boy's dead body over his shoulder and headed back towards his cabin in the forest. When Hanstrap arrived back at his cabin, he then dismembered and roasted the boy's remains. The overpowering urge to taste the boy's flesh became too much, and he cut off a slice and brought the crispy seasoned meat towards his lips. It was at this very moment that God was watching Hans Trapp, and God had decided enough was enough, and shot a bolt of lightning from the heavens, which hit Hans Trapp, killing him instantly, and setting the wooden cabin alight, burning it to the ground. But that wasn't the end for Hans Trapp. As punishment, his spirit was reanimated as a terrifying half-man, half-scarecrow hybrid who follows behind Santa Claus as he makes the rounds on Christmas Eve. And when Santa visits the houses of naughty children, he will leave his traditional piece of coal and then leave the Christmas scarecrow to inflict his own style of punishment upon the child. Some say Hans Trapp will whip the child with birch wood and insist that the child changes their way unless they want a fate like his. This is now Hans Trapp's only chance of redemption and his punishment is the uncontrollable urge to eat the children that he punishes, even after death. But he will never be allowed to do so as long as he travels behind St. Nicholas. And although St. Nicholas is the protector of all children, it would seem that he doesn't mind Hans Trapp dishing out his punishments from time to time to children who made it onto his naughty list. Over the many years, the legend of Hans Trapp has been passed down from generation to generation. Parents use the story to persuade their children to behave, 
unless they want to be visited by the Christmas scarecrow.